What up? What up? Hey, I'm letting everybody know right now. Get if you care about this information, get your pen and your pad. We ain't doing the repeat the steps thing today. You feel me? I need y'all to hit me the first time and hit me good. Somebody said get rich in prison. Yes, bro. That is exactly what I said. Absolutely. If you're not in prison, you definitely should take advantage of these. But uh somebody said you can't get rich in prison, you gotta get out first. Uh bro, unfortunately. Uh, I mean, that's unfortunate that you think that way. Your mind just hasn't been opened enough, and you're probably not. Um, yeah, bro, you're probably not as crafty as you could be. So yeah, there's definitely a way to to make money while you're incarcerated. Um, I'm such a beast from learning from Derek, investing in books, if not all of them. I appreciate that. Yeah, to everybody, shout out to you for mentioning that to everybody. Um, y'all ain't getting no more catalogs after these. Well, y'all can still get them, but they're not going to be free. A lot of y'all literally blew me up at the end of January. Bro, I, I, I get paid on Friday. Bro, my tax is coming up, blah, blah, blah. I'm just letting y'all know. Um, I'm absolutely not. Yeah, y'all going to be asked out. There are some, I'm sure there's people on who pay full price. The motherfucker's $1,000. So to everybody that haven't got theirs yet, this is literally an audio book in there. And I know y'all don't be reading. Can we just stay free and get rich? Of course you can. Uh, listen, y'all, to everybody that want to state this stupid ass obvious, I don't feel like playing this morning. Um, y'all know I will play with y'all, but just I'm uh, we we gonna stay on task this morning. Of course you can stay free and get rich. That's what I've been teaching since day one. Um, but this is what, like I said, if it don't apply, then like just you know sit in the sit your ass in the back and be quiet. But uh, there are some people like, hey, matter of fact, drop a one if somebody in your family is incarcerated. I'm going to drop a one. You feel me? Like, these are the people the conversation is asking for. Shout out to the people on YouTube who join in the YouTube live as well. Um, But anyway, y'all, to everybody that got somebody in their family that's incarcerated or that's going through it, this one's for you. So I'm going to say this again. And that catalog that I've been telling y'all to get for free, y'all know right now for these final 600, when you get your catalog, you also get lifetime access to the mentorship. So do me a favor. Stop fucking DMing me talking about bro, can I holler at you? No. Nigga, I'm a grown ass man with nine children. I do a lot on the daily. I'm not finna stop what I'm doing to talk to you in my DM when I got a whole fucking mentorship and people who in the mentorship who actively listen and talk to me all goddamn day whenever they need to. You feel me? So, uh, bro, I want to build one-on-one. Oh, bro, I got a goddamn gazillion dollar idea. I just need five hours of you. I'm not playing with y'all. I got a whole fucking mentorship that you can get in for free. Find somebody to play with. You feel me? I I, I can see if I was charging you niggas $80,000 to talk to me. Because I know goddamn well. I know goddamn well I'm 34 and this motherfuckers in like four generations of your family that have not done what your boy done did by 34 respectfully. You feel me? So I should charge a lot more. But anyway, I ain't playing with none of y'all. So to everybody that be in my DM with that, I know you ain't going to never read this shit. Bro, you're psychic. You're right. I'm never going to read that shit. I purposely do not read that shit. If I have a place in the section where I tell grown ass people they could meet me at that costs less than the, the, the Reggie they smoke, costs less than them eyelashes. It costs less than all that bullshit that y'all be participating in. Please don't expect me to stop my life and have a conversation with you because you the nigga in the bunch that just don't fucking listen but got a budget for everything else under the sun. You feel me? Go vent to your drug dealer. Ask that nigga how to get your shit in order and how to teach your children how to be self-sufficient and run shit. Go ask that nigga. You feel me? But anyway, I just had to throw that out there, y'all, because I get a nigga going to do this shit as soon as I get off block. Hey, bro, bro, let me holler at you. Let you not. I got this big ass thing called the Great Stamp Mentorship. Like, we we literally in here politicking right now. Y'all see what that say? That say 1107. It's 1113. We literally in here politicking now. You feel me? So to everybody that be want to holler at me on that, let me holler at your shit. That's what people holler at me. All right? Let's go, though. So look, today we're going to politic on ways that you can make paper from behind the wall. Quite a few of you all dropped a one. I'm going to say this again, y'all, in the catalog, because so many of y'all getting caught up on just the physical. And I can't wait till the books get to the front door. I feel you. And I totally understand that. But you need to go check that motherfucking email that we sent along with it so you can log in. It's 19 audio books in that motherfucker that a lot of y'all, I know you ain't listening to one yet because you ain't even, you ain't even pay attention to, to the part where it say you get access to trade school. How to start an IT company. How to start a construction company from scratch. How to do your own copyrights, trademarks, patent. Y'all, it's a lot of goddamn how-tos and audio books in there. So what I'm finna talk to y'all about is out of the catalog, 
one of the trades in there is how to make money while incarcerated. Let's get into it. So number one, for everybody that got somebody incarcerated behind the wall, you know what's one of the dopest ways that your people can be making money right the fuck now? What if you hit up your constituents that's behind the wall and you say, hey, bro, I want you to make a post-prison curriculum. This is what that simply means. You on the outside, and that's if they need you, because some people ain't going to need you, but you on the outside, you're going to do the footwork for them, right? These your niggas. You got love for them, right? You want them to get money. Hey, matter of fact, let me ask this. Let me ask this, because I know this from experience. How many of y'all don't have to put money on the nigga books? How many of y'all get inconvenienced at times because your relative like, man, hey, you think you can send me 200? I need that bitch ASAP. I know it too well. How many of y'all done been through that? Do that shit not be annoying? Does it not put you in a place where you like, damn? Um, wait, where you like, damn, I gotta um, I gotta handle my shit and handle this nigga shit, blah, blah, blah. That shit get rough. I've been there for sure. I know it, I know it to be true. So let me get back to it. Um, this is what you could do. Here's a play right here. You next time you get a collect call from your peoples, um, tell them this, hey bro, you've been in there a while. I've been on the outside. We should combine and then we're gonna make a post-prison curriculum. The curriculum is gonna be based off how do men and women integrate back into society once they get free. So I want you to use your expertise of what you know from behind the wall. And, I, and I'm going to use my expertise of what I know from outside of the wall. We're going to put it together. You can keep the proceeds, bro, because I got a job where I'm hustling. Whatever I'm doing on the outside, I, I pretty much got my shit together. I just want you to stop being dependent on me and be able to make your own bag. So from there, right, I'm not going to get into the ins and outs of it because some of this may not be legal per se. But literally, you can have your partner that's on the inside can be teaching people how to transition to the outside. You literally can have a curriculum that they simply like, cause you know, you know, motherfuckers ain't got debits and credit in it. Motherfuckers can literally have their cousin. Listen, and they do it for everything else. Tell me I'm lying. Niggas that have their cousin cash out for a cell phone, they'll cash out abroad, they'll cash out, shoot, listen, they'll do any fucking thing. So the same way that we push a hard line for bullshit is the same way you're going to tell your constituents that's behind the wall, like, hey, let bro know this to cash out. His mama that be handling all his business and all his affairs on the outside, Tell her to cash at me $100. I'm going to make sure he have this curriculum and this training ready for him. Because I'm going to tell you something. I'm sure there's niggas on here right now that been to prison before. And they can tell you from the horse's mouth what it's like being away from society for five to ten years. And then you're trying to transition back into the free world. Motherfuckers got iPhones, artificial intelligence. These are all things that people behind the wall are not aware of. So some, like, peep this, right? Some of y'all be absolutely mind blown and you in the free world. Can you imagine how scary it is for a nigga that just came home? Like, you'll be blown away like, what the fuck? The world is changing so much. Imagine how the fuck they feel when they've been gone for three years and this motherfucking robot's out here changing tires and doing heart surgeries. Y'all literally could have a simplistic curriculum where y'all put y'all brains together and now they're making money. Every motherfucker they run into that's approaching a release, they should have an elevator pitch. This is why elevator pitches are important. Why they motherfucking sitting in there being like, hey, bro, you going home soon, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Hey, bro, check this out. Man, I got this I, I got this handmade curriculum me and my cousin collaborated on. Bro, I guarantee you that shit going to help you transition, bro, from emotionally. Y'all, these are pain points that you use when you politicking with somebody behind the wall. Emotional intelligence. Because niggas have to learn how to reconnect with their loved ones, the woman, if she's still waiting, their children, X, Y, Z. Financial intelligence. Fuck niggas behind the wall, niggas outside of the wall. Everybody need that. E um, I already said emotion, emotional, financial, mental, mentally. You listen, you know how many niggas behind the wall don't know nothing about shadow work, don't know nothing about breath work, don't know nothing about meditation, yoga, don't know anything about being still. They don't know anything about other than they circle. They don't know anything about a lot. These are all different pain points that y'all could be hitting and monetizing post release. Let me keep going. I'm gonna skip around accountability and coaching you know how many niggas behind the wall actually want to be better they want to do more so next time you get a collect call from your people you should run this by them like hey bro you ever thought of coaching you a pretty wise nigga we have dope ass conversations you ever thought about monetizing how 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 great you can articulate on the inside so we can get money that's waiting on you on the outside you could stop hitting me you could be sending money to your children 
And listen, that's the biggest thing. Niggas be leaving families behind. They can literally be, and again, physically they can't be there, but you could you could at least financially be making some type. Man, you could literally have the cash app set up to your daughters. You ain't got to have no middleman. Next time you get a collect call, have a conversation with your man to be like, bro, I'm going to set up a cash app for your daughter. Every time a nigga want to pick your brain and on some big homie OG shit, tell him his people need the cash app. Man, you man, listen, you can make a nigga set an appointment about based on based on the moments and the times that they call y'all. If your cousin call every Thursday at 8 p.m., that nigga that want to pick his brain for free and ask all the motherfucking questions, tell bro like, hey, if you serious, bro, next time you call your people's, tell them cash out $50 to this cash app. We'll meet up here. We'll meet up here again, 9 a.m. on Friday, bro. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions, help you understand your pay. Listen. Y'all got cousins and relatives in there that understand paperwork on a level that all the new niggas don't. It's unfortunate, y'all, but niggas go to prison every day. Do you understand the market just behind the, just behind the bars? Niggas be so caught up in this market. It's an, anybody that know about prison, y'all know they got their whole own economy. They got their they, they have their own whole fucking world. Anybody that ever been there or know somebody that really been there and gave you the ins and outs, they got their own world. Unfortunately. New niggas come in every day. If you got a if you got a relative, a cousin, or whoever who's smart paperwork wise and know how to simplify all that bullshit they have chunked up on a piece of paper, y'all. I know y'all do, man. Some of y'all got cousins that's been in that bitch that long that he could read that paper with his eyes closed. Why is he not being paid? Why is he not monetizing his intellectual property and the fact that he been there so long that he could break down a nigga paperwork in a matter of minutes? Why y'all not setting up cash apps so he can look a nigga in the face and be like, hey, bro, you know, if you need help simplifying that, you know, if you need a you man, if you need a guide in the law library so you could work it yourself. If you need an accountability coach, if you need a coach, period, bro, I got you. Tell your people send a hundred dollars a month, two hundred dollars a month to this cash app. And I'm going to make sure, bro, you are good to go. And as I'm giving you these ideas. Y'all feel free to twist them because it's just some things we're just not going to say on the Internet when it comes to the politics of prison and jail. But as I'm giving you these cash app ideas, uh, there's a multitude of ways that the people that y'all love and fuck with can be monetizing how smart they are, how tough they are, how crafty they are, all those good things. I'm going to give you another one. Um, y'all, y'all people that's behind the wall, why are they not blogging? Why is there not a prison blog? I'm sure one exists somewhere. But why do they not have prison blogs where they write the trials and tribulations mentally how it go down and how fucked up it is in there, the learning lessons and all that, sending you that information, you uploading it to the internet and having a paid blog. I keep telling y'all, a lot of y'all don't know how vast, and y'all, if I'm looking over here, I'm talking to YouTube, y'all don't know how vast that market is. It's unfortunate, y'all, but like, I guarantee it's probably no human on either one of these lives who don't know somebody that's been affected by the penal system. Nigga, it's one of the biggest common denominators. Why are we not cashing in? Like, the bitch is already stealing our freedom. We at least need to get some money while we back here. We at least need to monetize our intellectual property. Like, this is the sad part. Some of y'all got three, four generations of motherfuckers who done gave time to the penal system. And y'all still ain't figured out how, like, bro, I know you made a mistake. I know you had to exchange a lot of years. But nigga, at least get paid for it. Use the expertise. Use the crazy shit you saw in there. Use something. Do something with it besides having jail stories that you're going to tell niggas in 10 years and they're going to be like, oh, that's what's up, unk. You were tough as hell in jail. Great. Don't matter what the fuck now, but great. Y'all, for those of you who are behind the wall, y'all literally could have blogs where y'all target troubled youth. I'm giving you a real play. You back there, bro, so you know what come with that. Some of y'all niggas got phones. I'm not going to go deep into that, but y'all got phones, bro. Y'all really could be. Man, y'all could be killing the game. But anyway, you target the troubled youth with your blog. You're going to create a blog that shows the youngins how the inside of that world is. So they ass don't want to go there. You literally can create personalized messages. Like you could have an option on a goddamn website where it says, would you like a personalized message from Joe Johnson? He's His DOC number is bloop, bloop, bloop. He currently been incarcerated for 12 years on this and that charge. He's a reformed felon and he writes personalized notes to youth offenders to assist them and not going down the same road that he has.
do you know how many struggling motherfucking great aunties grandmas and single moms out here would pay you pay you well to try to avoid their son from going to do motherfucking 30 years in prison it's mamas that do it they usually send them to them officer correction programs and them niggas can't give you no intel from the inside because they officers they never been there this is another like next time your nigga call you you tell him that like bro you've been in that bitch five years you ever thought about coming up with a blog that speaks about the trials and tribulations and mentally and emotionally how they suppress niggas and damn near try to kill your spirit so we can then target other youth that may not want to do this you ever thought about sending personalized messages or voice notes or letters or having people cash app you instantly you feel me so your daughter even though you gone from your babies they ain't got to be financially fucked up because you're taking your intellectual property and your experiences behind the wall and you're monetizing them to avoid other people coming behind the same fucking wall you know it's worth a try we got another one um this is a huge one this is a huge one some of y'all relatives articulate extremely well and they in and they're in they're behind the wall with niggas who can't we're gonna keep it real uh unfortunately a lot of black people specifically have never picked up picked up a book after grade school completely unfortunate i don't know how y'all niggas still alive if you on here i ain't gonna lie i don't even know how y'all still breathing and y'all don't be reading but shout out to y'all because y'all made it y'all y'all still alive y'all might have y'all may have fucked up lives but y'all still alive and i give y'all props for that because not have ever picked up a book since you left 12th grade or whatever grade you left school at you are a resourceful bad motherfucker because it takes some knowledge to win i know you might not be winning but it takes some knowledge to win in america but anyway for those of you who have relatives or partners or constituents who articulate well valentine's day is coming up niggas will pay you and i know this from experience niggas will absolutely pay you to write a heartfelt letter to the woman whose attention they trying to hold on and maintain while they do this three-year sentence these niggas don't know how to write this is a market this, these are talents these are minute skills that you learn in grade school that you can now monetize are y'all laughing y'all being dead ass serious it's some illiterate niggas behind and in front of the wall both they on both ends it's some niggas on both ends that's like you know a little retarded unfortunately i ain't just talking about niggas in prison There's some niggas out here that cannot read and write tell a nigga to tell you the difference between two 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 nope tell a nigga to tell you the difference between there 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 nope tell the nigga to tell you the difference between want and won't i'm sick of y'all too i don't like y'all be stressing me out i be hating when they were talking about i want that one wait you you don't want it or you want it <laughs> but for the jay Ron, you said i used to write those letters for homies no nah, bro that's a real business that's a real business hold on one second y'all uh, all right y'all i'm back I know I'll be multitasking, but yeah, this is a real business. So for those who have uh, constituents behind the wall who can articulate well, they could be monetizing the fact that they can actually write and articulate themselves. Prison publications, y'all. That's another place where people get a bag. Prison publication, y'all. Again, I'm not gonna read all of them down. Like I said, it's an audio book. So once you get the catalog, it is titled "Make How to Make Money in Prison." Uh, I work with a 50 something that can't read. That shit hurt my heart. Nah, bro, for real. Celebrity Kendall, shout out, bro. See, I used to do art behind the walls of people's family. Yeah, bro, for man, listen, I got that one on the list too, but I got arts and crap, bro. It's, it's a lot of shit on there. So again, y'all, what I'm reading to y'all from is from an actual audio book. Like I'm I'm reading the actual verbiage for it. But when you get your catalog and y'all see it's it's pretty goddamn long. No, no way in hell I'm going through all this on live. But anyway, y'all, for the people, when you get your catalog. I'm gonna say this again i know y'all hell bent on the physical part y'all wanted the book the book the curriculum i get that y'all do not overlook do not overlook them audio books in there how, how how to be a more um what is it how to be a better dad 
how to tap into your emotional intelligence, how to be a brand ambassador, how to start an IT company. It's a lot of how-tos in there that y'all missing out on. And one of the main common denominators I get from people all the time, I need some money, bro. I'm trying to get some money. I get it. We live in fucking America. I said, you know I get it. I've been saying this shit since day one. The country built out violence and entrepreneurship. But like, a lot of y'all be so caught up on point A that you forget B, C, and D. Like, bro, you driving right now. Cut the audio book on. You feel me? Like, you cleaning up the crib. Cut the audio book on. I'm going to tell you something else that differentiate me from most people. I practice inclusion. That's why I see my children. Y'all have seen my children since day one, and y'all see them right now. And I'm going to absolutely let them take over. That's the whole goal. I'm 34 years old. You know how good it's going to feel to retire by 35 and be like, my children run shit? Y'all practice inclusion. So these same audio books, these trades that I'm teaching you, like, yo, I'm not pushing college on none of my children. I don't want to get into the college debate, but I'm not pushing that shit on none of my children. I teach my children trades. I teach them how to hustle and I teach them what to do with money. If they got trades, nigga, they don't need school, college or none of that shit. They have intellectual property that they're going to be able to eat with to the end of time. And I'm not going to lie. Like, I keep saying this shit. Y'all, we all going to look up in 10 years and motherfuckers going to be able to say, like, bro, like, look, some of y'all were saying that yesterday, like, bro, I don't watch these kids grow up. Y'all gonna watch them become adults too. And y'all gonna see them either do what they daddy did or do it even bigger. And ain't nobody gonna be able to be like, bro, you know that nigga used to go live and really tell us, like, hey, this is a trade. I got 18 of them in this thing called my catalog. Sit down with your babies and teach them this trade at the same time. Ain't nobody gonna be able to be like, bro, I I, I remember when the nigga daughter was three. She's 12 now. She's not even teenager teenage yet. But I remember seeing her at three with a gun. And here we are. She's 19 at some point, and the motherfucker's just untouchable. They moving and grooving harder than they dad. They popping more shit than they daddy did. So I'm telling y'all, y'all practice inclusion. If you got children, you got relatives, people you love, y'all should function with them audio books simultaneously. Niggas got them loud speakers in the crib. Nigga, cut the music twice a day. I mean, twice a week, and just play the audio books. Like, listen, when you get your catalog, go through the list of trades. And then ask your children, do any of them interest them? And then make that shit mandatory. Like, that's another thing, too. I'm going to switch to parenting real quick. But one of the reasons, y'all, and I learned this with myself. I used to let my children practice free will. One of the main reasons I think families are going to be fucked up for a long time is because y'all don't have bylaws. Y'all don't have rules and regulations. And this is where shit gets scary. Y'all niggas got religious bylaws. It's certain shit y'all will not do when it comes to religion. Y'all terrified of you just what well, God would not like that. I'm not gonna do that. Nigga, what about your fucking last name? Your last name ain't hitting on shit. Y'all don't have no bylaws. Y'all got no rules and regulations. There is no mandatory. That's why you got one son who ain't doing shit, a daughter that's kind of doing something, four other kids who lost as a motherfucker, got no concept of real living or the real world, and you they lost as parent. There is no rules and regulations. It is a mandatory in my household. Every child going to know how to shoot. Every child going to get a Cuban and a Rolex. Every child is going to be able to pop their shit about themselves. And every child is going to learn two trades per year. By the time they motherfucking 15 years old, I should have no loser ass children. I've been on. I mean, like, now, you know, niggas going to make their choice. You can't force them at a certain age. You know, they're going to be like, nigga, fuck everything you said. I'm going to do drugs and hang off the ceiling. That's their business. But the point I'm saying is. Y'all need to give these niggas a fighting chance. Like, there's no chance. It's just like, oh, you know, we're gonna wake up. We're gonna we're gonna let Monday Monday and what happens happens. No, this family got real bylaws. We got rules and regulations. Like the shit y'all seeing with my children now. I had to have a conversation. I'm like, listen, I know I let y'all practice free will. I know I be letting y'all do y'all thing, but this shit right here mandatory. I cannot die, and it's just certain shit I didn't instill. So even if I got to make you sit down and digest this information, that's what the fuck we going to do. Because I would feel like a, excuse me, an irresponsible as man, leader and daddy to know like I died and them niggas didn't know nothing about nothing. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of people at. Y'all motherfucking lightning struck your ass right now. Them kids are going to be lost mentally, emotionally, financially. And their greatest influence and educator is a fucking school system that failed your great grandma ass, your grandma ass your mama ass in your ass and currently failing y'all i'm gonna keep using that example because that shit literally breaks my heart and it's one of the most idiotic things i've ever experienced in my existence how do you take what you claim to be the most precious thing to you and send it to a system that single-handedly fucked 
the last four generations of your family. Your great grandmother has the same buying power as the youngest toddler in your family. That shit don't scare you. That neither one of them, the one year old that just popped out your cousin pussy and the 80 year old that done had all y'all ass cannot go in Toys R Us and get anything on credit. That shit should scare the fuck out of you. That shit should bother you. Granted, you've been around the sun 80 times. You got the same buying power as little junior who in fourth grade. That's not okay. So I know for me personally, we got bylaws. We got rules and regulations. It's certain shit that's mandatory in this motherfucker. You ain't finna just play around or kinda know or oh, we'll leave it up to your teachers. Bitch, your mama did the same thing and look at your life. Her mama did the same thing. Look at her life like, yo, that shit don't spook you out that some of us. Like, man, that shit don't bother you that. Because it be bothering me. Because I only got like maybe two people in my whole family I can call. Maybe one. That shit don't scare you, though, that like our families don't be having no backbone and foundation. That we be the only thing that's kind of on the up and up. And if we drop dead right now, the likelihood of the next three generations falling is extremely high. That shit ain't spooky to you that like, because you know we going to die. We got to leave this bitch. Everybody on, whether you on my YouTube live or IG, we got to leave this bitch. That don't scare you. That shit don't make you think like, all right, bitch, I got to do something. We got to multiply us. That's why I say this shit be funny, right? When y'all be in my comments like, Oh, he think he meant Kenny. He... No, I think I'm going to have a family that run yours. Flat out. Yeah, I got multiple children. And none of them dependent on the school system. None of them, I mean, except my youngest four, but none of them are uneducated on money. None of them don't know what it's like to be self-entitled and be a little lazy motherfucker that watch TV and phones all day. So, yeah, to y'all, and not saying nobody personally, but to y'all, it be jokes and giggles. ha, ha. You think he Nick Cannon? No, bitch. I think I'm the nigga who kids gonna hire y'all kids. Because we doing what you niggas is not doing. We up on what you niggas is not up on. I'm not letting motherfucking television and teachers raise my children. I'm letting my motherfucking children raise my children with my guidance. You feel me? So I had to throw the one out there because I get every time I announce I got another baby. When you gonna settle? When you... Bitch, when you going to live? You lived a struggle life with your parents and you've been struggling since 18 since you got on your fucking own. Get off my dick and figure out how I got children who be buying me shit. Literally, y'all, Derrica said that she's like, what you want for Valentine's Day? I was like, baby, don't celebrate that shit. She's like, well, you getting something. Come on, nigga. Them the type of children I'm raising. Not that. Da daddy. Daddy. No, motherfucker telling me like, man, I'm tired of you not celebrating yourself. Your ass going to get something. You gonna get your feet done and you going to do something. No, like literally, my seven-year-old, and she made me so proud with her little blonde ass, because she be blonde some days. My baby came to me the other day and she was like, Dad, I saw your uh I saw your DoorDash, and it was $80 to get our food the other day. And she was like, I'm starting to finally understand why you don't be wanting a DoorDash. I get it. She was like, it costs a lot to DoorDash us something even once a day. And we be asking you for stuff every day. And in that moment, I, you know, I had a proud dad moment. Like, look at you understanding the exchange. Cause she she handles my shipping. And she was like, wait, spin. That was Malaya, bro. Well, her, her name God. It's Malaya God Grace, but I we call it either or, but um she she was doing the shipping and she was like daddy i would have to ship for three four days to be doing stuff like that and i was like babe you getting it you understanding the correlation between time and money you understanding that like for me to give y'all what i be giving y'all i'm losing a lot of time rightfully so i, I purposely made y'all i'm y'all daddy but you getting that yo man listen i ain't gonna lie y'all man you know how they're gonna be cracking at 17 they seven them two male and malaya is seven years old they five weeks apart I can't wait. That should be hilarious when I be seeing women with their first date list. Man, my daughters ain't tripping on no nigga by no first date. She gonna, she probably gonna pay for the first date. Baby, baby, don't worry about it. My food budget is a hundred thousand a year. It's, it's all right. I'll handle this one. 
You get the next one. <laughs> they not finna be, they not finna be no self-entitled motherfuckers running around thinking, of, hey, that's one of my favorite things about the way I'm raising them. Is they not gonna be like this shit I be seeing on the internet. You know, a man, when you, you, you know they be doing their interviews, a man need to make this amount. No, I don't give a fuck what he made. That's an additive. I already got what I made. I've been making it since I was a kid. But again, y'all, the reason, the only reason I'm able to even like ponder upon that outcome is because I'm doing certain things with them right now that's going to provide the foundation and the stability for that to even be the outcome. I said this shit yesterday, y'all. Man, stop waiting on them to turn 18 and let the world raise them. Y'all, let's be honest. That's why most of us are fucked right now. Me included. There are things about life that I'm not aware of. You know why? I told y'all this before. Society tricked our parents. Society tricked our parents into believing that we were ready for the world because our age said one eight or we graduated high school. So once you graduate high school based on society and you turn 18, you're ready for the world. Unfortunately, that may apply to white America. And shout out to them for being ahead of the curve. I'm not a hater at all. Y'all keep listening. As long as niggas is playing, y'all keep running the world. Them niggas deserve to get drugged if they don't apply themselves. But when it comes to black America, most of us was not ready. Most of us right now still don't know about credit. Them, them, them motherfuckers playing on the stock market in elementary. It's not because they, they have access to information. We, I mean, I'm sure they do have access, but, you know, we all got iPhones. Everybody in this motherfucker right now got a smartphone. That's how you're able to get on live and look at another human. But let me get back to it. So society tricked our parents into believing that we were ready for the world because we hit 18. Granted. Our parents do, didn't or doesn't do what their parents typically does. So we don't know about credit. We don't know what a CD is. The only CD we know is for music. Uh, we don't know about insurance. We don't know about life insurance. We don't know about a lot of shit. But because we were forced into the world at 18, which is what most parents and uh, y'all, this is the sick and sad part. Most of y'all can look in the mirror right now and admit with me, hey, Matter of fact, drop a one if you feel like public school did not give you what you needed for the real world. Drop a one. I'm going to drop 80 of them motherfuckers. Only thing that prepared me for the world, I feel like, was writing in English, a little bit of math, and my economics class in like 12, I think I was 12 grade, I took economics. Other than that, though, yeah. We just got babysat. That's all. They were babysitting us till we till we turn till we hit twelfth grade and got the fuck out of their way, <laughs> right? So that's my point. A lot of us can agree. They didn't equip us. What do we think has changed now that we have children? Not much has changed. It's the same system. So I just say all that to say this, y'all. Um, Spanish taught you some basics. Oh no, you right. You right. I did take Spanish too. They taught me some basics. I remember a couple words. I know how to count. I know the colors. I know a couple words. So, yeah. Shout out to my Spanish teacher. I can't remember her name, but shout out to her. Uh, but, yeah, the point I'm making is, y'all, we integrate our babies into that same exact system. So, all, all in all, y'all, stop anticipating them to be 18 and be ready for the world if you have given them nothing from a genuine place to be ready for the world. Because other than that, you're sending them to the same system that fucked you over. You are now 30 or 40 and not ready for the world. How do you expect the baby to be? So I want you to I want you to put yourself in their shoes because our parents did the same thing to us. We y'all like I remember this conversation with my dad, and my daddy was like, and I ended up moving out anyway. I left home at 18. I haven't I have not lived with my parents since I was 18 years old. I've been going from the career for 16 years at this point. But I remember my daddy saying, like, pop you know you at least need to get a job or you need to be in school it's old traditional ass shit you need to get you a job or you need to be in school and most of us don't know how to articulate at that point and drop a one if y'all can relate if you got that type of speech you about to be a man i'm not a man man i'm not emotionally intact i don't know anything about credit I'm one dimensional when it comes to money. The only thing I know how to do is spend that shit. I don't know anything else to do with a dollar. I am not a man. I got a penis. Uh, I can't ejaculate. But 
under all other spectrums, I'm not a man. I am not fucking ready. I'm not a woman. I'm not fucking ready. But they sent us out there. So I say that to say this last thing. When it, and I'm, I'm on the parenting, y'all, but I'm going to shut up and get off of that. Um, He's still on my ass about school three years later. <laughs> man, that's how I fucking be. But I'm going to say this to y'all real quick. And then I'm going to get off the parenting stuff. Um, Y'all, a lot of us, if our parents had gave us 10 more years with love, with hands-on education at 18, man, do you know as a culture how far ahead we'll be right now? Do you realize like the reason you haven't been able to invest in yourself the way you need to is because you're struggling to pay your rent and you got a mama 10 minutes away, but because you was 18, she said you were supposed to get out and be grown? Y'all, it's fucked up, one, to not educate them. It's another level of fucked up to feed them to the wolves in the world and not educate them. I'm telling you, like, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. When I replay it, I be thinking about, like, damn, if I had to stay there till I was 30, I'm 34. If I had to stay there till I was 30, do you know how much richer I would be? Do you know how quicker I probably would have popped and became something in life? Because I'm not dealing with the ills of the world or I'm not trying to manage a house or pay bills and all this other shit. Do you know how much stronger we would be? If instead of going to get 18 motherfucking mortgages, we focus on getting a plot of land and building houses so we never have to park. That's been one of my main goals. That's why I got the crib the size I did in Georgia. It's 15 acres. It's, it, my house, my, now my house in Georgia, and I'm not bragging like I built it that way. I bought it that way. The people before did it, but the house is so fucking big, it's split into three parts. The driveway, damn near half a mile. When you get down the end, you're going to see a house on the left. You see the main house in the middle, and it's another piece of house to the far right. Yo, do you know how motherfucking stronger we would be if we stop focusing on this fake bravado of I'm ready for the world. I got to prove them wrong. They kicked me out. I'm grown now. No, we were just like, hey, let's get us a plot. Nah, you got mamas and daddies out here with six kids that's paying rent. What? Nigga, you crazy as fuck. You got four children out here paying rent? Think about, man, y'all. I'm going to tell you some real spill. Somebody that don't mind sharing, how much you pay for rent and how big is the house? Just, just tell me like two bed, two bath, and I pay this much for rent. Anybody that don't mind sharing, anybody on the YouTube side that don't mind sharing, tell me how much you pay for rent. I'm sorry. Tell me how much you pay for rent and tell me how big it is. Co-op visuals. You said, I want to marry your daughter. Uh, great, bro. If you're looking for a reaction, you're not gonna get one, bro. Shit like that don't bother me. We will like really pay to get you wiped off the face of the earth if we ever felt you was an issue, bro. So stupid shit on the internet don't bother me about my kids. I'm not a sensitive nigga. If it's real, you'll know it's real. Your mom gonna call you and tell you something bad happened to her if she's able to call you. All right, uh, eight bedroom, seven hundred a month, nine sixty two bedroom, two bath, thousand, two thousand, twenty three hundred a month. All right, y'all. So this is the point I'm making, right? Everybody's referencing a thousand plus, damn near. So I'm gonna give y'all an example, and I'm putting y'all in my business. Every home I have under my belt. And I'll tell you this before, so it ain't a big deal. Every home I have under my belt, I own, except for one. I pay a mortgage monthly on the house in Georgia. The house in Georgia is 15,000 square feet. The main house by itself, seven, eight bed, seven bath, just the main house. I pay $7,085 a month in the mortgage. So do you realize... If three of y'all was my niggas and we paid 1500 a month, we will have a compound in Georgia right now. Just, just four of us. And we got, we got fit, like the house in total is like 14,600 square feet and the land is 15, 15 acres. Do you realize that if three of us got together right now and put goddamn $1,600 together, I think, $1,600, $1,700 together, we would have what I call a compound. We would have 15 acres at our leisure. 
and we will have a huge ass house that's split into threes. That's a total of 14,000 and like 800 square feet. So I'm just giving you this idea because motherfuckers will raise us. Celebrity, how much I put down, bro? I put down, uh, bro, I think I put down 320,000. It was something, bro, I know it's between 320 and 350, bro. And listen, y'all, y'all can ask the mentees. This mentee's on here. When we do lock-ins, that's what we're doing at, at my crib in Georgia. They've been there. They'll tell you, like, it's space. Uh, Hey, to the mentees, anybody that was at the lock-in, how many of us was in the house? Include the team. I know mentees alone, it was like 15 to 16 mentees. Uh, me, Kari, Tabby, Khadija, Say Red, TT, 222. I'm missing somebody. But, y'all, we're talking about at least, like, 27, 28 people. Yeah, Key said it was, like, 30 people. Y'all, don't do this shit to your... Don't do to your children what a lot of our parents did to us. That's the only point I'm making. Man, let them babies stay home. Continue to nurture them. We... Some of us are 25 years old, and we're still not ready. Uh, y'all, I'm 34, and these things that I'm not ready for. Y'all, I just mastered emotional intelligence two years ago. Nigga, I'm 34 years old. Two years ago, I just figured that out and really got really strong with it. Prior to that, I could only give it to my daughters. I did not know how to give that to a woman. Now, granted, do you need emotional intelligence to be ready for the world? Not necessarily, but this is the point I'm making. We all got shit that we lacking. And we all could have been way stronger at it had we not been raised by parents that said, oh, you're 18. You need to get your ass out of here. Mama, you 42 and you not ready. Why is you going to send a nigga that's been under your tutelage and leadership since the day he's been born? You know I'm not ready. You lost. And you double my age. Don't do that shit to y'all kids, y'all. This is why I teach the thing. So I'm going to bring it full circle so we got the full thought. I'm telling y'all, we, we off the prison part. We talking about inclusion. And we talking about when I said, when you get your catalog, practice inclusion with the audio books. Now here we go full circle, because I know I done probably lost some people. Full circle is this. Derek not going to force them kids to leave. Derek going to put them children in a position of power and he have mandatory trades that them children got to learn. Some of my children ain't even going to play the internet. Like Malaya done already told me she don't want to do the internet. She don't want to make videos. She don't like the, the invasion of her privacy when a nigga in her face with a camera, which is why she's seven years old and she handles her daddy shipping. I said, man, listen, hey, ask my bro Aristotle Investments. Bro pulled up to the crib the other day and was like, what the fuck? I come outside, he like, he like, bro, they really work. I'm like, yeah, bro, they really work. He like, Derek got a gun. I'm like, no, nah, bro. I'm like, hell yeah. You're not gonna walk, you're not gonna walk up on none of these kids. I wasn't saying that to him like that. I'm saying, like, ain't no nigga finna walk up on my sanctuary or pull up on my children and think it's gonna be simplistic. Nigga gonna blow your ass off. And yes, there are children in this house who actively have a Monday through Friday job and work. So let me bring full circle again. Derek ain't gonna push them kids out uh at 18 years old. He don't believe in that. Derek gonna nurture them children as long as they need to be nurtured. But Derek, y'all know Derek is a wild nigga. Derek be having fun. Derek be changing diapers on Sundays, having orgies on Mondays. Might have a and we might shout out to the team. Some of y'all on here. We might have a DG TV party. You just never know with me. So you know what Derek gonna do? Derek gonna buy a big mass of land. So his children going to be a little further down the driveway, but he ain't making them leave. He not going to throw them out into the world. He not going to tell them to go get in all this motherfucking debt to show that they're, they're a big kid now. No, those are things he going to do at the crib. Derek can look in the mirror and realize he wasn't ready for the world at fucking 34 years old today. I don't know it all. So you know what he not going to do to his children? Throw their motherfucking ass out there at 18 knowing goddamn well they don't know it all. I'm going to say it again. You know what's better than having five children who renting from six different complexes around the city? Going to get you some motherfucking land, pulling y'all resources, teaching them trades so your family's going to make money no matter what. I give you an example. Intellectual property is the greatest gift that all of us will have in this shit called life. There is a reason why I'm making Derek and Derek go live. There's a reason why I got them not working on their own independent courses, classes, and curriculums. That is their IP. That's their intellectual property. 
if I teach you how to monetize your experiences and your thoughts, baby, you ain't never gonna go broke. It won't happen. I mean, we all go broke at times, but y'all mean like, I mean, completely fall off. You should never fall off because you're not solely relying on the energy plant. You're not solely relying on cash and carry. You're not solely relying on the stock market. You're not solely relying on any fucking thing. It is within. I taught you trades. I taught you how to make money with your mouth, your brains, and your physical capacity. Everything else is an additive. I'm not going to make you leave. I have I have reason to believe I'm going to look up at 40. I'm 34. I have reason to believe I'm going to look up at 40 and this family going to look like the motherfucking dream team. You don't have a 7-year-old with a $100,000 net worth, a 12-year-old that's worth 700 grand, a 16-year-old that just that 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 he talking about, hey, Shit, I'm thinking about buying the, the, the surrounding six acres so I could build a crib deeper in the back. No, you got a fucking family unit. So I'm going to say it again, y'all, and, sim and simple. When I was just talking about the catalog, y'all, create rituals, create bylaws, create rules and regulations for your family. Stop letting your children accidentally become genius. Stop letting them accidentally become smart. Stop hoping and praying. Just create a fucking plan of action. Hey, First quarter of the year, this is what we're going to focus on as a family. Second quarter, this is what we're going to focus Y'all, because y'all like, I'll be transparent with y'all. My seven year olds, they just getting their feet wet with this work shit. I done had them help before, but I really got them working and they get paid bi weekly. But I got a system. We got a six week plan. I'm going to teach y'all this this week. I'm going to teach y'all this this week. And I'm going to teach y'all that. You know, you know, you know, two things these girls hopefully ain't going to ever need based off my teachings no nigga and no job. To all the women on here like i y'all I, I know y'all can agree and feel it like man if i didn't need to either be solely reliant on a man or a job my life would be completely different so i'm gonna say this shit again y'all like it ain't rocket science and we're gonna look up in 10 years and i want motherfuckers to be able to say like i know a nigga bro i know a nigga that showed us that shit taught us that shit and told us to check back in 10 years and he was gonna show us that shit again Y'all, we all got the same 24 hours. Y'all niggas know how to read just like I know how to read, hopefully. You know, some of y'all might know how to read. Get the proper help, though, for if you don't know how to read. Because you got to know how to read in America. That's why so many of us be upside down with contracts and agreements. But on a serious note, um, inclusion is a must. And I say that with everybody. Like, wow, your, your most genius-like moments. And you get all the pertinent information you need for life. You want to tell your children to go in the room. What type of dumbass shit is that? You want to be the only winning nigga around? What if you die? I'm going to keep saying that one, y'all. Like, you know, everybody on this bitch going to die. The question is when. And if it comes premature based on what the time limit that you feel like to empower them babies, guess who is going to navigate life on their fucking own? And most of, most of y'all and me, we can remember what it was like being 18 trying to eat. Being 19, trying to make your first meal and manage your life. Like I said, I've been out. I, I left home at 18. I know what that shit like. I got a car note. I got to pay for this house. And I'm 18. Motherfuckers ain't paying me no more than $12, $13 an hour. And then, listen, we, we come from a narrative and a culture where it's a weakness to ask for help. Drop a one. Y'all last on here. I do the same shit still. I'm guilty. Drop a one if at times, either current or previous, you looked at needing help as a weakness. Shit, man, listen, to the people on here, y'all know it get real sticky. You know you be super fucked up and don't tell nobody. Just be out there hungry. They got a whole family that'll give your ass some bread and butter 10 minutes. Man, I ain't calling them niggas for shit. Nah, nah. I got something to prove. We not doing that. You ain't got to call me, nigga. We all live on the same land. I'm going to ring that motherfucking church bell. Dinner's ready. <laughs> Charge, your lunch is ready. <laughs> but no, nah, y'all know this shit too well because I do it. My daddy will literally get mad at me. Like, man, you tripping, bro. Got all the motherfucking kids over there and y'all just going to go it out because I'd be like, dad, you know, man, I, I ain't want to bother nobody. That'd be my favorite line. I ain't want to bother nobody. Y'all, we, we listen, we, we not even creating that narrative. We, we we not even pushing that narrative. Like, we pushing that. Like, boy, we is fucking family. 
nigga, this is what families do. Look at man, look at y'all president. That nigga's son do every drug in the book. You think that nigga don't wash his hands with his son? You don't think he be making phone calls and pulling strings? I think that nigga, I think, I can't remember his first name. I think that nigga really smoked crack. He really like be doing, nigga be doing hard drugs. Probably doing something today. Because he got a daddy that's not finna give up. And that nigga's grown, grown. Nigga, I'm not leaving you. Y'all finna lock who up? No, y'all not. Y'all better let him out. That's my son. <laughs> hey, yeah, Hunter, that's his <laughs> I think, yeah, I don't know too many niggas still smoking crack. In our era, that boy smoked crack. You feel me? That boy do hard drugs. Shit make your teeth fall out. Your eyes be all sunken. <laughs> hey, that nigga ain't leaving his kids though. <laughs> hey, I can laugh as much as I want by him smoking crack. Joe not leaving his son though. The world will not get a hold of his son without him having a say in it. You hear me? So we got to do the same. Do I agree on letting the kids pay bills? Derek and Derek, uh! watch this, bro. And I ain't going to lie. I know some of y'all going to judge me for this, but check this out. And I don't care if y'all judge me because I did. Man, that's why I be telling y'all. Hey, when y'all be thinking I talk a lot of shit and I go hard on the Internet, man, that shit like. Cause if y'all was my niggas in real life, man, I hold you accountable. I'm gonna blitz your ass. I call your ass at four in the morning and curse you out and make you get up, throw water on y'all type of shit. You're gonna be great. You hang with me. Wait, brother, tell your brother come in. I want to ask y'all a question. Okay. <laughs> hey, but watch this, bro. Watch this. That's a good question. You said, do I do do I believe in the paying bills at 18? And them niggas pay bills right now. <laughs> My seven-year-olds, bro, they have to pay their phone. I don't make them pay the whole thing, but they have to give me $50 a month towards their phones, and they have to buy their own snacks and groceries. And they seven. All right, quick question. So, remember last night we was talking, and I was like, why haven't you been eating what you usually like to eat? So what, what was your answer? What was your genuine answer? I'm broke. Say it again. I'm broke. You broke. Mm -hmm. Y'all, to answer your question, bro, we're in a 7,000 square foot house, seven beds, seven baths. Derek said he is broke. That's why he has not been eating what he normally would eat. Uh, I believe in reality checks for my children. So I teach my children real life. If you don't grind, you do not eat. Not saying he ain't been grinding, but just answering your question where he said, do I believe in them paying their bills? Hell yeah. I started some shit with them last night. What I asked y'all last night, who's who's who touched my turkey and who drank my tea? Listen, I, I had I had some tea. This I want this like eggs. You ate more than two pieces though. It's not I true. bought a half a pound of turkey. My shit about gone. I ain't make no sandwiches. I'll eat it by itself. I didn't drink that tea. The only time I ever drank your tea was when I came in here and asked you for something. And I didn't like it. What all you ate yesterday? Oatmeal, cereal, and crackers. All right, I appreciate y'all. I'll call you back in a second. Listen, bro, I don't play. Bro, I can't, bro. Bro, if I die on them tonight, they got to know how to do it. They got to know what come with being lazy. They got to know what come with not being active. So I ain't going to lie, bro. Like, bro, I'm going to tell you some real shit. Because as a father, that shit did bother me a little bit. I asked him yesterday. I'm like, what? I was just in there. We just politicking last. I'm like, what y'all ate today? It's like I ate. Oatmeal, cereal, and some crackers. I'm like, nigga, why you eating like you uh homeless? He's like, cause I'm broke. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? He's like, cause I'm broke. He's like, I can't ask you. And granted, if he if he wanted motherfucking root Chris, I'd get him root Chris. But bro, those are those hard lessons. Those are those moments that are going to define character. Bro, it's people on here right now. See, like, this this is what I'm telling y'all. You could do it now, or you could live through it later. And I'm not judging nobody or trying to make fun of y'all situation. But bro, some niggas on here right now that's eating that same shit or less. Because they broke. Bro, give it to them now. Give it to them now where you still got the, like, we still got a foundation. 
So he ain't gonna go pick up one of his guns and go rob the corner store because he's down to his last. If he just fucking down to his last, he's gonna be like, Dad, I'm hungry as a motherfucker. Let me get something. But bro, I'm telling you, just bringing it full circle. We throw our children to the wolves at such an early age. Man, when life go to getting to them, niggas go, niggas go to making poor decisions. That's why we got self-entitled women. Because they prematurely got pushed into the world. So rather than like being taught how to save themselves, they looking for a man to save them. Nobody, nobody held their hand and took the time to be like, baby, all right, I want you to earn and learn for yourself. So we're going to do this while you're five. We're going to do this while you're six. We're going to do this while you're seven. And we're going to do this while you're eight. Nah. Nigga just, look, oh, you grown? Get out there. And now you got a generation of self-entitled women. Now you got a generation of men that will crash out. Like, y'all, hey, drop a one if y'all saw the video I posted yesterday on Instagram. Five niggas robbed a corner store. On fucking robbery. Five niggas? What y'all finna do? What is y'all finna buy? What investment is y'all finna make split? Y'all, it could have been 100000 in that bitch. And we know it ain't. 100000 nigga. 20 Gs a pop. Y'all faces on camera. Bro, what substantial investment are y'all going to make that is still going to make sense when you get done doing this time? Because your face is on fucking candid camera. Y'all putting guns to people's heads, robbing a motherfucking convenience store. Nah, bro. Their mamas and daddies were supposed to hold them a little longer. Their mamas and daddies were supposed to teach them trades. Their mamas and daddies. Man, listen, it's so much, bro. But that's why I say, like, and ain't no telling, bro, man. Listen, they mom and daddies could be dead. We don't know what the back, what the back end, but that's the point I'm making. That's why I'm fucking around with time. That's why I'm on their ass day in and day out. Because, man, Thursday not promised. I could die on Wednesday. I could be like, yeah, man, Thursday, I'm finna, I'm, I'm finna, I'm finna play this audio book. I'm finna finally put y'all in the game. Nigga dead on Tuesday. Oh, here we go. Next generation of strugglers. Now these young niggas finna, 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 finna been a mentally and emotionally and financially struggle for the next 20 years because I ain't handled my business as a motherfucking man. All right, you said all my mom's kids 17 plus now and she's realizing how much she missing and stealing, but division is a real problem between us having different moms, seven children, no community, I'm working on it. No, nah, I agree. I agree definitely, y'all. Like community is a big thing, man. And you know it'd be crazy to me for a lot of people, not saying this to, to you directly, but for a lot of people, we know community when it's Thanksgiving. This why this why I be going hard on y'all. Listen, everybody that feel like I be going hard, y'all gonna love and appreciate me later on in life. Right now, you ain't gonna get it because you just ain't ready to get it. But you niggas be doing community for Christmas. Niggas do community for Thanksgiving. Niggas do community for birthdays. Niggas do community for the Super Bowl. Tell niggas do community for credit. Tell niggas do community for gun education. Tell niggas do community for self-love emotional regulation bonding what fuck no huh tell niggas do community to start a business fuck no tell niggas do community because they they they're both their favorite teams are in the super bowl niggas a hundred deep drugs chicken wings cameras bottles you name it they got it so we know better we know what the fuck to do <laughs> we just choose not to do it it's funny, but it's not funny. But anyway, y'all, my live about the end. Shout out to everybody on YouTube who tuning in. Shout out to everybody on IG. Like I said, y'all, when y'all get your catalog, please log in so you can get access to your audio books and the courses. Them audio books are motherfucking game changing. I promise you. Shit, if you took something from this live, you're going to take something from them 19 audio books in the catalog. And again, y'all, we, we are at our final 600 for free. Everybody that hit me last week, bro, I get paid in February. Hold on tight, bro. Come on. Don't listen. Get your ass over there. Use a payment plan. That shit is $15. That's why, that's why I don't be playing with y'all. Because y'all finna buy some shit today that's 30 times more than that. And they gonna change shit about you and your family life. But anyway, man, click the link in the bio. Because once those 600 gone, I'm going to charge y'all. They're not going to disappear. I'm just going to charge y'all. Other than that, I'll holler at y'all. Y'all have a beautiful Sunday. YouTube, I'll holler at y'all.